Welcome to Ops 101, Securing Your Hybrid Environment. Today, we're going to be talking about all things Azure Security Center. Joining with me today uh, is Sarah Young. She's our Senior PM for all things security here at Microsoft. Sarah, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So today, we're going to be discussing specifically around Azure Security Center and the, what it can be used for in regards to securing your hybrid implementation of on-premises and in, in cloud architecture. There's been a lot of name changes that have occurred. Can we you know, first start with that? Because that's one number one question that we've been getting thus far in terms of what's going on with all the name changes. Yeah, so we've had a lot of name changes in the last couple of months. Uh, I, I do think they're actually really good name changes because they are standardizing what um, all the different name changes that we have uh, um, and all the different naming conventions we have. But specifically around Security Center, we now have Azure Security Center or ASC as we did before. Yep. Um, ASC is our free tier of CSPM, which is Cloud Security Posture Management Software. Um, within Security Center, we have Azure Defender. And Azure Defender is our cloud workload protection uh, product. Um, that's the, uh, the paid for element of uh, this suite of products. And that protects against different threats. I actually have, and here's something I prepared earlier. Um, uh, this is, uh, it's a little bit, um, it's going a little bit outside, but I think it's a really good, uh, it's a really good diagram you can see here. Um, we have a lot of our XDR offering, it's called Microsoft Defender, and that splits into two halves. We have Microsoft 365 Defender, which we're not talking about in this session, but right. that's um, for endpoints, oh, as you can see, endpoints, identities, apps, et cetera. Um, and Azure Defender on the right-hand side there, that's talking, uh, this is our threat protection on the Azure um, and server endpoint side. So for SQL, for your network, IoT, app services, containers, server VMs, um, and all of those different products together, um, constitute Microsoft Defender. Now, I know there's a heck of a lot of uh, different names and we do change them. So hopefully this diagram helps. I think this is a pretty good one to help explain things. But um, yeah, we uh, uh, got a lot of things out there. The other thing that's really good to look at if you're um, still understanding where everything fits, um, all the different Microsoft products, is looking at the cybersecurity reference architecture. It's a very, very busy diagram, uh, but it does show where all of the different Microsoft products sit. So that's worth checking out too. So we're going to come back to uh, Azure Defender later on. I definitely want to touch on the IoT piece, which we're seeing as the new uh, architecturally hybrid solution because your IoT devices are on premises or uh, you know in the real world pushing data up to the cloud. Uh, but I also want to cover the SQL piece as well because there are a lot of organizations that have that requirement of the SQL servers being on premises. And we'll love to see and have that talk about how Azure Defender defends those as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through what Azure Security Center can do for your hybrid implementation or your hybrid architecture for on-premises and in cloud. Take it away, Sarah. OK, so um, this is Azure Security Center. I'll talk about Azure Security Center first, and then I'll move on to talk about Azure Defender, which is part of Security Center. So Azure Security Center, or ASC, it's been around for a while. It is. Um, uh, it is a really, really nice tool um, included within Azure, so you should go look at it. One of the great things about it is that um, despite the name, calling it Azure Security Center, it can be used for uh, machines and virtual machines that are on-premise or in other clouds, and we manage them through Azure Arc. Um, I'll, I'll come back and talk about that a bit later. Um, so um, as I said, Security Center is a posture management tool. Um, we've rejigged this screen uh, uh, in the last few months. So uh, depending on when was the last time you looked at Security Center, it might look a bit different. But I think uh, the improvements we've made are really good. Um, so the first thing we'll have a look at is Secure Score. Now, Secure Score is something that we uh, that we do use um, quite regularly um, in Microsoft. You might have seen Secure Score in uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, we do use it in other places. But when we look at Secure Score here, we're looking at Secure Score uh, for um, for your Azure infrastructure and any um, 
cloud, other cloud or on-premise infrastructure. So um, if I have a look here, um, I'm just going to pick one of the subscriptions we've got. We can have a look and see how well we're scoring on a per subscription. You'll notice that um, you can be quite granular with this. So you can have a, you can just use ASC and look at a single subscription, or you can have it roll up and look at multiple subscriptions. In some organizations, we see that, uh, particularly if you're going towards that agile DevOps model, that operational teams are actually taking responsibility for their for their individual subscriptions. Um, and so that's why you might want to make the access limited to a certain subscription. And that can be done using our role-based access control or RBAC, or it might be you've still got a central team doing all of it, but we can cater to it either way. So you can see here on the subscription, I've just uh, dived into a little bit. Um, our secure, the secure score on here is 77%. I've got 41 out of 54 points. Uh, and we can see that um, I've got uh, some, some about a third of my resources are considered healthy. Uh, <laughs> about two thirds are considered unhealthy. Now, um, what um, posture management is about trying to um, get rid of the gotchas, like the, the the kind of basic things that you should do. Because one of the great things about cloud and one of the terrible things about cloud at the same time is that you know you can just spin up resources left, right, and center. Um, and you can spin them up quickly and easily. And it means that um, from a, uh, a security perspective, someone could be <laughs> Just, just spinning up random machines everywhere, and they may not have, um, and they may not have the right controls on them. They may not have the right images, and Security Center can help with that. So, we know actually, um, it's worth pointing out here. We know that a good proportion of security breaches are not um, initiated or propagated um, through, you know, someone in a hacker, someone in a, in a hoodie, sorry, sort of tapping on a keyboard, doing some very, very uh, complicated zero day. Often attackers are using known, known bugs, things that need patching, or even just misconfigurations. And so this is where Security Center can help because the posture management and secure score can help you see where you your machines are not configured to security best practice, and it can help you remediate them. And obviously that overall um, reduces the risk of uh, those misconfigurations being manipulated by an attacker to do something bad. So if we have a look, I'll just um, now we've uh, recent, uh, recently ish uh, rearranged some of these uh, rearranged some of these uh, uh, how we categorize these. I think it's much more um, it's much more obvious now. So you can see here, um, top of the list, we have remediate vulnerabilities. So when we talk about vulnerabilities, this can be patching. Um, it can be uh, from our vulnerability assessment. Um, ASC um, Azure Security Center does have. Qualys uh, uh, as a gray box solution. Uh, Qualys is a vulnerability scanner, so that can look for any known vulnerabilities on your app, on your uh, machines. But you can see here, um, we've got um, Azure Defender for SQL should be enabled. Um, vulnerabilities in the Azure Container Registry images should be remediated. Vulnerabilities in your virtual machine should be remediated. So I'm going to click on this one uh, just so you can have a little bit more detail. If you click on one of these, it will, um, to start with, um, it will tell you all the findings. So you can see here, um, uh, six of the 14 virtual machines in this subscription, they don't have the Windows security update for November 2020. Um, they also don't have the Windows security update for December 2020. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, um, don't don't judge our demo environment. It is <laughs> well, it's it done is, like that so that you can show it, right? It, it is supposed to be like this. Um, uh, look, we don't, you know, we basically there's quite a lot of Windows security updates missing on here. Um, uh, you can see that we tell you how many resources are affected by this. Uh, there's also an Internet Explorer update there too, and we've also given it a severity as well. Um, if I click on that, um, that particular finding, it will actually give me some more information. Um, so it will um, tell me the impact. Now, um, this one's fairly kind of fairly obvious, which is um, if there's known vulnerabilities in your machine, uh, that gives the attacker the, um, the 
possibility to exploit it. It will also give you here um, the CVEs and the CVSS base score. Now, if you're not familiar with what they are, the CVE is the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures list. This is a centrally uh, controlled list, which I'll actually show you. It's done by MITRE. Um, um, and uh, every time vulnerabilities are found, uh, security vulnerabilities, they are logged in the CVE uh, directory. Um, so you can see here, um, generally, um, a CVE ID will be CVE 2020, the year it was discovered, and then what number it is for that year. Um, so you can find these um, for not just, it's not just OSs and Windows, um, it can be for uh, code, it can be for other programs, uh, but that's where uh, that's where researchers and manufacturers will log their CVEs. Um, so, um, and the CVSS base score um, tells you um, how severe the potential impact could be. So you can go up to 10, uh, I believe 10 is the highest off the top of my head, um, and it, it goes down from there. So um, you might have a, a minor security vulnerability that ultimately the impact might not be too bad. But if you can get up to a 9.8 and a 10 there, that's actually quite um, <laughs> quite bad. Um, so that gives you an idea of, um, and as you can see, we and Microsoft have categorized this as high severity. So that suggests you should fix this as soon as you can. So as you can see here, there's lots of CVEs that this particular security update um, uh, is addressing. Um, and then it will tell you the uh, the affected resources here. So we've got the um, we've got some virtual machines. Um, just here, I wanted to show uh, highlight these two servers in the middle. Um, these uh, the one the two at the top and the two at the bottom are virtual machines that are from uh, that are uh, from. Uh, Azure, they're actually Azure resources. These two in the middle, just by, you can tell by the change in, uh, by the change in, uh, by the change in logo, they are actually on-premise servers that have been onboarded through Arc. So this is something that you can get for your um, virtual machines within Azure, but also for your virtual, uh, for any virtual machines that you onboard to Azure Arc, um, Security Center can also monitor them. Because of course, um, you know, uh, we talk about all the time. There's no point. Um, most people are running hybrid environments nowadays. There's no point just monitoring the cloud or just monitoring your on-prem. You need to get this view across everything. So that's something to remember. Um, do you remember that this can you can onboard? Uh, you can onboard on-prem machines and get this sort of information as well. Um, we also give you some remediation. I mean, essentially here the remediation is please install the security update, but that might vary depending on what you see. I was going to ask in terms of what it actually reports out, is there any difference in terms of the reporting from a virtual machine that's based in Azure or a virtual machine based in, in Hyper-V? Uh, would there be a designation on the uh, report out list that you just shared? Uh, in terms of which was which, if it was on premises or in cloud, or is it just see it just sees them all as virtual machines and then reports on them just the same? So it does uh, in, on this side of things, the reporting's the same. If you did need to see your, if you did for reporting purposes, perhaps need to see on prem and in Azure differently, or or you needed to you know know what sort of the delta was between the two. Um, the way that you onboarded those machines into Azure Arc would make that easier because when you onboard a machine into Azure Arc, you'll put it in a resource group. So you'd probably have like an on-premise resource group and, and maybe put that in a separate subscription. And then what you'd be able to do is see that as a separate subscription, but have it all roll up. There's a couple of ways you could deal with that. But essentially, the um, the 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 reporting is the same uh but you may you know some people may need to some organizations might need right. to see them separate some some organizations there's regulations that require them to report out their on-premises impl implementation that mm -hmm. is required this is the security um that's being monitored this, this is what the report out is in terms of their implementation so they can prove that it's to this to the spec that's required for the iso standard or the certificate uh that's yep. required with, required by the organization to upkeep Definitely. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these because we'd be here yep. for hours, but um, you can see if I, I'll scroll down a little bit now, um, you'll only see, um, you'll only see recommendations that are relevant to the resources that ASC can see. So you wouldn't see this, 
you wouldn't um, see uh, you wouldn't see a recommendation in here if you've got no resources that it's relevant to. Um, and this is always being updated. So you can see here um, we've got um, some Azure and we've actually got here a specific on prem right. recommendation. Log analytics agents should be installed on your Linux based Azure Arc machines. Um, so the log analytics agent is uh, used for various different things. Um, it's also used for Sentinel, but the log analytics agent does need to be installed on both on any virtual machines that ASC is monitoring. Um, it does use that agent to help it report on things. So, um, but here, um, ASC is smart though. It will actually tell you, it, it does know if there are virtual machines in your subscription that don't have it installed. And as we can see here with this remediation, it actually tells you, please install it because I can't see anything. So, um, so you know, we do make this really, really as straightforward as possible. And particularly, as I said, if you're moving to that DevOps thing where perhaps developers weren't, who weren't, you know, weren't necessarily responsible for operational security in the past, if they're just learning how to do this, it's, it's nice and easy to do. And where you can see there's a, a blue box here that says quick fix, that's yep. where we've got automated remediation to fix that problem. So oh, um, yeah, we love that. So that means we've got an ARM template or a logic app that would be able to, uh, that would actually be able to, uh, fix it. Now, you'll see here, because we practice what we preach in Microsoft, that we have the principle of least privilege. I actually do not have sufficient permissions on this demo to select <laughs> this uh, this Arc machine. Uh, but if I did, um, what you would see, you can see here, um, I would select the machines. And down here, uh, we've got some, well, they're grayed out for me um, on this one. Uh, you would be able to hit remediate or trigger logic app, and that would actually fix it would do the automated remediation. Um, we also provide you uh, the ability to look at the ARM template um, and the actual logic of the remediation before you do it. So um, of course, because if we're looking at production environments, um, I'm very aware because I come from an operational background that you can't just necessarily start installing things willy nilly right. on operational uh, things. So in fact, this is a good demonstration of how as well you can limit the permissions that people have to ASC. It might be you just want them to be able to look but not fix, which is what I have here in this particular environment. So it so you don't need to be scared that people are just going to use this automated remediation to start making changes in prod without it being controlled and going through your change control process. Role-based access control has been huge uh, in terms of the least amount of enablement provided to uh, administrators, end users, whoever are, is governing over your organization and it has to be granted access and the whole trouble ticketing capability that can be implemented and permissions granted through that trouble ticketing. Uh, it, it's such a huge benefit for uh, security forensics, it, you know, should something happen or uh, there's a theft of, of data occurring, you know, the fact that you have this capability of lockdown and asking for, and granting permissions and then tracking that whole history in terms of the footprints and how that all occurred, huge advantage for people and organizations to keep track of what's going on. Mm, and you've probably heard it before. It's cheesy, but it's true. You know, identity is our new perimeter with hybrid right. environments. When you've got things on premise and you've got things on the cloud, the only way that you can now build a perimeter, we can't have, we can't just box everything in a traditional on-prem data center with lots of firewalls anymore. We can't just use the network because of hybrid architectures. So the only way that we can have a perimeter now is to have really strong centralized identity controls. It, it's the way forward and it's a journey journey for everyone. And I'm not saying before anyone like jumps at me on Discord or anything, I'm not saying <laughs> network controls aren't important. I am previously a network engineer in a previous life, but they can't be the only thing we can rely on anymore right. in hybrid architecture. It just doesn't work. So yeah, identity and RBAC is really, really important. There's another half a day rant I could go on that we definitely don't have time for. <laughs> We'll have to do that in future. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Um, 
and you can see, um, I, as I said, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, right. uh, but um, you can see um, the, um, we've got things like uh, looking at network. As I said, network is important. Yep. Applying system updates, of course. Um, enable auditing and logging. Um, implement security best practices. Now, here's a good one that I do like to see is right. done, which is MFA. Um, you can see here that MFA is um, all enabled on our subscription. Right. This, this demo subscription is not all bad. Um, and we got our encrypted data in transit, uh, secure management ports. Um, and if you're wondering, these best practices come from a variety of places, but they are largely based on internal Microsoft best practice, um, the uh, CIS, which is Center for Internet Security, um, Azure Benchmark, and general best practices in industry. So uh, um, yeah, these are this is a really good place to start. If if you're still, if you're just starting to move to the cloud and um, I had once had a customer and I love this description, it's always stuck in my mind. They said that their cloud implementation was a bit of a wild west, <laughs> um, that people had just spun things up all over the place and oh, yeah. the security team didn't really have good visibility of what, anything was, um, whether it was good, whether it was bad, like this is a really good place to start. And because it's scored, it's something that you can actually um, look to improve over time and you can track that uh, and you can track it and monitor it and you can see how your secure score improves, which is great because it uh, if you're still sort of maybe building a cloud security policy, because, you know, the reality is not all businesses will build a cloud security policy before they start moving to cloud. And right. um, this is, um, you know, a, a way to start you off and saying, well, you know, he, these are best industry um industry best practices and we are adhering to them or this is where we're not let's look how we can fix that etc so i think this is a really good place to start so a couple of things i want to re-emphasize mfa or multi-factor authentication really important it's no longer an excuse you don't have to buy a token you can enable that functionality directly on your smartphone using the app uh, or there's a callback feature what have you it's something that you can activate in azure active directory for that type mm -hmm. of implementation so something that you know you should take into consideration when you're deploying your security strategy across your hybrid infrastructure. The other piece I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware of is your security posture and your governance posture should be planned hand in hand. You know, the cloud shouldn't be the wild wild west when you're migrating data up into the cloud and taking advantage of a hybrid infrastructure implementation. Governance is that key that can provide you that guidance in terms of what the organization has said is okay to deploy, to spin up in terms of services in your organization. It's something that can be agreed upon by the organization as a whole and doesn't have to be governed by one entity. Think of it as cloud adoption with training wheels or with guardrails so that you don't fall off the bed uh, and you ensure that your organization stays in its secure posture that's required for the implementation of cloud. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's yeah, you've got to, as you said, your governance and uh, your security standards do need to go hand in hand. It's it's tricky um, and you've got to translate. Often businesses will have had something or organizations will have had something they were using on prem um, and it's not necessarily a straight sort of copy paste. But yeah, it's an important thing to do so you can actually judge where you're at. But I think ASC is a really good place to start if you're still going through that journey and working it out within your organization. And of course, the great thing is it also will look at your on-premise as well, because a lot of these best practices that um, you can see, they are good, common, um, good, solid common sense. And, you know, the vast majority of them also apply and uh, to on-premise machines as well. Right. So you can use this actually to get a look back um, if you onboard machines um, through Azure Arc, you can actually see what your on-premise um kind of um, secure security uh, baseline is as well, uh, which c might be an interesting experience for uh, some customers, depending depending on uh, how your on-premise, uh, how well it's been looked after in the past. Right. And that's the thing, right? That's the important piece. You want to have that you know, uniformity of your virtual machines <laughs> across on-premises and cloud. And so if rules are needed to be abided by in, in cloud, most likely they have to be done on premise as well. So it's something where if you're getting now that standardized, this is what we should be at and why we're not there, it being reported out in ASC is a, is a huge advantage for organizations to get up to spec in terms of the updates and security patches that are required. Yeah, exactly. And you know, this is, this is, 
you know, we have this discussion all the time in security, but it's right. so, so true, is that an attacker doesn't care if your server right. is in the cloud or on-premise, they're gonna go for um, the low-hanging fruit, the easiest thing for them to get into. It may not be where they need to be initially, but if that gets them a foothold in your organization, then um, in your environment, then they can start to look to move laterally and move through your environment. So um, if you just concentrate, say, on patching all your new things in the cloud, and you just sort of let your on-prem just do its thing um, and neglect it. Um, an attacker might decide, um, you know, may just go for the easiest, lowest common denominator, whatever's easy. Uh, I mean, attackers don't care where right. it is. They're just going to go for the easiest thing. And even if that if that particular resource that that, that that they compromise doesn't have anything of value, that could be their point to start to pivot throughout the rest of your environment. So, you know, it is important you security has to be looked at holistically um, so you can't you can't just look at say hey we're going cloud first let's kind of just focus on cloud because you know at the end of the day that wouldn't necessarily protect you maybe it'll protect your cloud environment but yeah so we've got to always think about this in a holistic way in terms of your implementation of Azure Security Center and monitoring your on-premises implementation you may mention numerous times about Azure Arc is that mm -hmm. a requirement for your onboarding of uh, on-premises? Not necessarily. There are two ways you can onboard on-premise servers into Azure Security Center. Our recommended way is using Azure Arc. Um, and the way that we onboard to Azure Arc is, well, the same way you do any, Azure Arc onboarding, no matter what you choose to use Azure Arc for, is exactly the same. Um, in fact, well, here's one I made earlier. Um, essentially, um, if you've already got a on-prem machine you want to add, um, you simply add it as a server. Um, and uh, essentially, you have to click through here, fill in where you want to onboard it within your um, Azure subscription. You can put tags on it. Obviously, this isn't going to work because it's a. Uh, this is me messing around. And then it will create for you a custom script that's tailored for that machine. And you download and run the script, and then it will onboard to Azure Arc. Um, that, and uh, so, of course, Azure Arc um, has many other uses as well. It's not just for ASC, but that's our recommended way of doing it. Um, the other way that you can do it that was the only way to do it until Azure Arc came along, which is to uh, manually add agents here um, within Security Center. Um, this is probably more fiddly. Um, the agent that you have to install is the log analytics agent, um, uh, but it is a little bit fiddlier to do it like that. We definitely recommend Azure Arc, um, but yeah, this is the other way you can do it. Um, you. The cool thing is, um, is that it doesn't matter how you, which one you install, um, from an ASC perspective at least, the functionality is the same. Uh, but we would recommend you go with Azure Arc, which is a way of uh, connecting um, things outside Azure into Azure uh, for many different services. So there's a lot of other good reasons to to use that. So there, there now, are your two options. So now for more information around Azure Arc, we'll provide a link below. Uh, in regards to where you can find out more information about Azure Arc and its implementation. But it's great to know that there is choice in terms of your deployment or your monitoring of your on-premises implementation in a hybrid uh, infrastructure uh, through Azure Security Center. I think one of the big things for me is, you had mentioned, is the manual process that's required outside of Azure Arc, whereas in Azure Arc, it's all automated. Uh, is it safe to assume that it also allows you to do multiple implementations of server that's on-premises uh, through Azure Arc really quickly as opposed to doing it the other way where you're going one by one by one installing the clients. Yeah, actually, to be fair, um, to to be fair to the when we say manually, um, it is possible to push out this. Okay. Uh, um, it is possible to, if you're using um, SCCM um, and other um, systems on premise that push mass updates and programs, you can get the log analytics machine to um, you can use those systems to push the log analytics agent. So it's probably not entirely fair to say it's literally one by one by okay. one. Um, but Azure Arc is the easier way of doing it. It's more straightforward because um, okay. that is something that's designed uh, for for doing those things and onboarding. 
So there's one other thing I wanted to show um, from Security Center, which is really valuable. And we touched on this just before. Um, you talked about regulations and regulatory compliance. Uh, that is something that most organizations, no matter what the vertical and where you are in the world, most organizations are beholden to regulatory compliance in some way, shape or form. And we actually have a module as part of Security Center that can help with that. So um, you can see here, we've got um, ISO 27001, uh, PCI DSS, uh, which is for processing credit card payments. Uh, we have NIST, uh, which is uh, made by the federal government. Um, I'm not going to read them all out here. Uh, right. We've got the Azure CIS, the Center for Internet Security Benchmark, uh, which I did refer to earlier in the recommendations. And the regulatory compliance module here will actually score uh, your infrastructure, the infrastructure that it can see against these regulatory standards. So, um, you know, if we have a look at ISO here, um, ISO 27001 um, is a very, very common global secu information right. security standard if you, you haven't heard of it. And you can see here, um, uh, it is actually, if we drill down, we can see all the different, uh, all the different um, rules within the standard. Um, and then we can see uh, where we've got a, a little red cross, that's where we're not compliant. Uh, where it's gray, that means um, uh, that means that's not an automated control at the moment, or it might be something that you have to look at outside of Azure, because these standards, if, if you're not familiar with these standards, they are holistic for an organization. So they're not just te necessarily technical standards. So you can see here, for example, um, human resources security, um, that's something uh, that's part of the ISO 27001 standard, but it's not something that ASC can look at because that is um, a company policy. If you see here, it's talking about for, um, uh, security around pri uh, prior to employment, during employment and termination. So for example, a prior to employment check would be doing a background check, maybe a criminal records check. Now ASC, of course, can't, isn't, it, whilst we, we have a lot of intelligence in ASC, ASC isn't able to go and read your organization's policies um, to know right. whether you can do that. So you will see some things grayed out because we can't check them. We'll be focusing on the technical infrastructure Structure controls. So um, if we have a look at one of these, as you can see, we're not doing particularly well in this subscription. Um, right. uh, uh, you can Our see purpose. here, uh, uh, segregation of duties, we're not adhering to that. And as you can see, when we drill down, it actually links it back to the best uh, practice recommendations and secure score that we were looking at before. So essentially, it's saying this is the uh, this is the part of the standard we're failing on, but this is how you fix it. So if I click here, it will actually take me to that recommendation that we were looking at previously. So again, um, there's still going to be work to do for you, but what it means is that you it very very clearly shows you links to how you can improve your posture and how it will help you adhere to regulatory compliance, which I think is really, really cool. And as someone who comes from, uh, I did work in financial services, and before that I worked for a big four um, uh, organization that did um, these sort of assessments on behalf of other organizations. I can tell you as someone who's had to, who's been on both sides of the fence for regulatory assessments, um, doing any of it in an automated fashion is really, really helpful because these sort of assessments against standards can be very, very time consuming. So um, this is definitely very, very valuable. So Sarah, one of the questions I know is going to come up is what is the difference then between Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel? Yeah, that's a really good question. And we get asked it a lot. So Azure Security Center is, um, you can see here, and I think this is one of the best diagrams we have to explain this. Azure, Azure Security Center is what you use to proactively prevent, uh, to be proactively stopping security things happen security issues happening. So this is when you can identify maybe where you've got uh, where you've got a, a, you know, a misconfiguration or something that's not configured to best practice, um, or you need to do patching, and then you can remediate that. Um, 
and implement protections. Um, and this is all before anything's happened. Um, then for Sentinel, and Sentinel is your seam where it will actually detect security incidents if they happen and then that's where you can respond and recover so that's kind of in the incident that's where security center and sentinel sit it's a really good question though and we get asked it a lot so uh yeah um i still think people are still um getting their heads around it but security center is just one pillar of the things that need to be fed into a seam like azure sentinel so security center um or azure defender uh the azure defender part of azure security center will generate threat protection alerts um and alongside uh, alerts coming from your identity your endpoint other clouds and network you would send that into your seam um so the seam has visibility of everything in your environment and then uh you it will it will create uh, incidents as appropriate, um, and that's the way that you get proper visibility of what's going on, uh, particularly in complex hybrid environments. So early on in the presentation, you talked about Azure Defender Threat Protection and its capabilities for your hybrid implementation of on-premises and in cloud. Let's get a little deeper into that. So, what does it actually mean, and what can you actually do with it? So Azure Defender is a cloud workload protection or CWP um, product. So what that means is it um, will actually uh, look at the behavior um, and the heuristics and what's going on in different products within Azure and some of them on-prem as well. Um, and if it sees um, something that looks like it could be uh, anomalous or looks like a pattern of behavior that we've seen in our Microsoft Threat Intelligence land, it will create an alert Alert. So uh, you can see here on the Azure Defender page, um, it shows us to start with uh, what is covered by Azure Defender, um, what is and isn't covered. Um, and you can see um, Azure Defender does go across a range of different things. We have servers, Kubernetes, container registries, SQL. Um, I'm not going to read them all out. And right. then we can see the security alerts here. So um, it actually tells us um, uh, what security alerts um, have been raised. Um, so this is uh, last two weeks or so here. Um, if I click on that, we can actually have a look at the security alerts. Um, again, this is a demo environment, so we yep. do have, um, and we, we do have quite a lot of alerts, so we can show people what goes on. But again, um, these alerts are going to depend on what is seen in your environment and what things you have running. But you can see here we've got um, DDoS attack for public IP, that's actually something that will have come from the Azure DDoS service, uh, which is uh, a network product that we have, but it will report into ASC. Um, for example, here we've got um, an exposed Kubernetes dashboard that's been detected. Uh, for those of you who aren't too familiar with Kubernetes, uh, uh, having a exposed Kubernetes dashboard is not good. Um, it is something that can, um, it is something uh, that can be potentially vulnerable and should be remediated. Um, if we go back to the security alerts, um, now here are some, uh, we've actually got quite a few here. We've got um, uh, uh, potential SQL brute force. Um, now SQL, of course, is something that a lot of people are running in some way, shape right. or form. And SQL injection is one of the OWASP top 10. Right. Uh, web vulnerabilities. So um, SQL brute force, of course, is not good. Um, you can see that um, someone is attempting to brute force the creds to your SQL server, because of course, you will log into a SQL server with different uh, creds. Uh, so you can see here, um, it's mapped to the MITRE attack tactics. Um, and um, it will give you the principal name, the application, the IP address, where we think it's come from. Of course, this is a demo. So it's not um, so interesting. Um, and then it will also, in take action, it will tell you what you need to do. Um, it's also possible to trigger an automated response here as well uh, to actually uh, fix it. Um, so fix it quickly without a person being involved if you want to. Um, of course, uh, that uh, so um, there are quite a lot of security alerts. Um, what you see, of course, is going to depend on what's running. But um, we do have coverage for um, a lot of different things. You can see here um, uh, we have some more SQL injection, which, of course, is quite a uh, can be a um, quite nasty attack if you've got vulnerable um, 
if you've got vulnerable SQL things running. Uh, we've got phishing content hosted on an Azure web app. Of course, that's not something you want to see. Um, just uh, it's not great to uh, that. Um, if someone's using phishing content on your right. web app, that suggests your web app's been compromised. It's also not good from a reputational perspective. Right. Um, we can see currency mining, so that's Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin mining. Um, and then focusing maybe more on like the server infrastructure, you can see here we've got failed SSH brute force attack. So that's when someone just keeps trying to SSH into a machine with credentials, just keep trying and trying and trying. Um, we can see suspicious authentication. As you can see, um, I can't, I'm not gonna read them all out, but there's right. many, many, many different things here and we're adding to them all the time. And of course it's, it's very contextual as to what you will see here. But if you see an alert in here based on Microsoft Threat Intelligence and all the different things that, uh, all the different threat intelligence that we collect and our security engineers and our threat intelligence folks, this is something that you may want to look at. So Sarah, we covered a lot today in regards to Azure Security Center. If somebody wants to continue on your, their journey in terms of upskilling on the service, what's the best resources made available for them? Yeah, so we've actually got now, um, in the last few months, we released the ASC Ninja training. So right. that's training that goes through ASC uh, from top to bottom um, and tells you how to use it. There's a lot of videos and tutorials and labs. So I think that's a great place to start. Uh, we also have an ASC GitHub repo uh, right. where there are example logic apps for mediating things. So that's definitely worth checking out. Uh, one of my colleagues, um, the very wonderful, um, Yuri, um, who's on my sister team, Yuri um, runs a regular uh, YouTube series called yep. Azure Security Center in the Field, uh, and uh, it's it's fairly bite sized and it goes through different aspects of ASC. He always interviews someone that's worth checking out, um, and you can always go to the um, the. Azure security tech community and look at the ASC pages where we do write new blogs and you can ask questions. Um, and we also have, um, as we do for Sentinel on our other security products, we run re webinars. Um, we uh, we post all the webinars if they're not at a good time for you. For me, over here in New Zealand, the webinars are at 3 a.m. So I don't really get up wow. for them, <laughs> post them, unless I'm running them. I have had right. to run a webinar at 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> because uh, we do them live, but then the recordings are posted to YouTube so you can watch them retrospectively. We have them for Sentinel, for ASC, um, for MCAS, all the other security products. So yeah, definitely go check that out too. Um, and that's probably a good place to start with with ASC. Um, oh, and we also have some MS Learn modules as well, which right. we're going to look to. And I think that's everything that's sort of a good foundation to, to look one, at one, ASC. What, one possible add would be the Azure Security Center hub on Docs as well, that you probably wanted to highlight yes. uh, in regards to your full repository of your uh, vanilla versions of implementation. Uh, and then looking at, you know, like tech community for that real world now guidance in terms of implementing Azure Security Center. Sarah, awesome to be with you here to talk about Azure Security Center. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you on social? Uh, that would be my Twitter handle. It's at underscore Sarah Y-O or Sarah Yo. Um, so feel free to tweet at me. Uh, my DMs are open for, for better or worse. So um, <laughs> feel, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Um, alternatively, you can also post, um, you can also post questions on the tech community website. And that's picked up by myself, my teammates and other engineering folks as well. If you have questions um, and we're always trying to help out where we can. And if you want to get a hold of me for some reason, you can find me on Twitter at Wireless Life or regularly producing content at itopstock.com. Sarah, thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for having me. See y'all. Bye.